One of the things I most appreciate about Cash On Demand is that it's a simple story that works on many levels. It's not just a suspenseful heist movie or merely a clever reworking of a Christmas carol. It's also a carefully observed study of the hierarchical workplace done in a particularly British manner. Fordyce represents a certain type of small, insecure man, we've all known them, who finds his station in life as a fanatical functionary, lording power over his subordinates like a Gestapo commandant, not a branch manager. And although no backstory is given to Gore Hepburn, we don't even know if that's his real name, Andre Morel gives the character so many intriguing dimensions, we wonder if he has some unspoken history with Fordyce. At times, he seems less interested in robbing the bank than in teaching Fordyce a torturous lesson in humility. The dynamic between them is so complex, it blurs the line between the hero and the villain. I mean, who's who? For that alone, I give it honorary noir status. Now, another thing that's noticeable about Cash on Demand, it's a nerve-rattling yarn that's virtually violence-free. Certainly not the case with Hammer's more popular films. The electrodes to the head bit is exactly the sort of grand guignol gimmick associated with Hammer's horror movies. But it's never shown. The only on-screen violence is when Hepburn slaps Fordyce to prove he means business. And in this stiff upper lip environment, that slap has more impact than a dozen off-handed shootings in American heist flicks. The lack of violence is, of course, the entire point. Gore Hepburn would never be so low class, so gauche, to bust in brandishing a weapon. And kudos to director Quentin Lawrence for resisting any temptation to open up the original play. It would have been an especially egregious mistake to show Hepburn's cohorts holding Mrs. Fordyce hostage, a mistake filmmakers with less savvy or more sadism would have made. By not showing it, we get an extra level of intrigue. What if our charming mastermind is just making it all up and is using actors to play the hostages? And here's a little trivia for you. Mrs. Fordyce, who's only seen as a picture on her husband's desk, was played by Vera Cook, an actress who was a hammer regular, playing mothers and landladies and things like Brides of Dracula and Kiss of the Vampire. This photo has to be her professional headshot because she never looked that glam on screen, where she typically played haggard and unhappy women. Now that is her on the other end of the line, by the way. Director Quentin Lawrence went by the nickname Q. And though he might not have been the same Q who provided 007 with all those spiffy and lethal gadgets, Lawrence was employed by the British government. He'd been educated as an engineer, and during World War II, he was what Brits call a boffin. His scientific knowledge was used in wartime experiments, first with radar and then atomic power. His expertise eventually led him to being shipped to Secret City, USA, a.k.a. Oak Ridge, Tennessee, where he worked on the top-secret Manhattan Project. That's right. The director of Cash on Demand was one of the scientists who helped develop the atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945. But of course, what he really wanted to do was direct. Lawrence used his government connections to get work in television in the mid-50s as a technician, but soon he realized his lifelong ambition to be behind the camera. Besides the crawling eye and Cash on Demand, he made decent thrillers in the early 60s like Playback and The Man Who Finally Died. His last feature was again for Hammer, The Secret of Blood Island, which, frankly, should remain a secret. He directed lots more television through the 60s and 70s before dying in 1978 at only 58 years of age. Now, Peter Cushing would, of course, become an icon of horror cinema. His career stretched into the 1980s and thankfully wasn't limited to chasing vampires and ghouls. A younger generation probably knows him best for his role as Grand Moff Tarkin, Darth Vader's right-hand man in the first Star Wars movie released in 1977. Amazingly, thanks to advances in CGI, Cushing reprised the role in a recent Star Wars film, 2016's Rogue One, even though he'd been dead for more than 20 years. 
So let us know what you thought of Cash on Demand. Was this a wonderful Christmas treat or a lump of coal in your stocking? And don't send your wish list to the North Pole. Send them to the Noir Alley Facebook page and Twitter feed. I can tell you already that Noir Santa has another gift in store for you. Next week, I'll be presenting the New Year's edition of Noir Alley with one of the most requested movies in my long career as a Noirchaeologist. Joan Leslie commits murder on New Year's Eve and then mysteriously lives the prior year over again in the noir stained fantasy repeat performance. The film has been restored and resurrected by my Film Noir Foundation and next week will be its first screening in the 25 year history of Turner Classic Movies. Until then, Merry Christmas everybody.